Wonderful people, viewers and subscribers, you're welcome back again. I want to tell Nigerians that your fear about fulanization of Nigeria is complete already. And it had come in a manner we all never understood, including myself, until I listened to this video and speech made by Pharaoh Temen. When you look all around you and you see poverty in Nigeria today, you think it's by accident. It's not by accident. It is by design. Poverty and ignorance are important ingredients in the maintenance of feudal orders. The more you know, the more questions you would ask. And the richer you are, the more time you have on your hand to think. Your capacity to use your brain is a challenge to feudalism. That is why you have weaponized ignorance chasing Nigerians around. The poverty you also see is by design. Because the poorer you are, the less likely that you are going to ask questions of those who rule you. So you have this idea of feudalism that started as part of a culture, but that has transcended that culture. It used to be that when you're talking feudalism, people are waiting to see an emir, or they are waiting to see a sultan, or an alkali. But the reality is that that idea, and that's where we come back to the ideas again, that idea is like a virus. It has dumped host. Where it used to exist only within the Fulani culture, it now exists in each and every Nigerian culture. Your governors are not unlike emirs. The president is not unlike the sultan. The government does not exist for all. It exists for a class. Feudalism does not work on the basis of the rule of law. It works on the basis of impunity, which means that somebody somewhere must be able to decide to whom the rules would apply and to whom it wouldn't apply, to whom the laws should apply and who should be above the law. So you find very quickly that it is impossible to build a nation because nations thrive on citizenship. Citizenship comes only when there is equality and the law is ruling. And it is only when you have citizens that you are likely to ever have patriots. So you have a country, yes, but you don't have citizens. You have Ruiners in place of rulers, and there are definitely no leaders. When you speak to leadership, you're talking about vision. It means that the person can close their eyes and see where they are going, even with their eyes closed. The Nigerian is forced to engage Nigeria as a tribesman. You are either a Igbo, a Yoruba, a Nijor, a Kalabari, a Fulani, and you are either something of that or the other. Nobody ever treats you as a Nigerian and a human being. The only reason that has not happened is because of the need to preserve the capacity to apply unfair advantages. So you can't have an identikit of a Nigerian. So those of us who believe that this country can be better, first thing first, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't say love your neighbor more than yourself. Let's be clear. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now that you've learned to love your neighbor as yourself, how do you come out of this mess? Because we are still in the mess. And I was talking to an idea that I said is what is required to confront the idea that we are struggling with. So what is this idea? That idea is of an egalitarian Nigeria. One that has sufficient room for each and every one of those who live within its borders. Your religiosity, your ethnicity should not matter. The class you come from should not matter. It is only when we find these commonalities that it becomes easy to isolate those who have oppressed all of us. There is only so much that can be said in one day, and only so much can be fitted into 30 minutes that I have already taken liberty by giving myself some more time. But no matter how long I stand here to talk to you, whatever I say is useless if there is no love in your heart to hear me. But when you are done embracing the love in your heart, you must also embrace one other reality, and that is the reality that tells you that however long you live, I've said it already, you will go one day. But when you are gone, what will be said that you did whilst you are here? Nigeria is laboring. It's in the labor room, all right. Just as one Nigeria died in 1966, there is another Nigeria that must die. It's not that the way that it must die. Because if that Nigeria does not die, what is being designed for my children and your children and our children's children is scary. Ideas rule the world. The Taliban waited 20 years on the strength of their ideas. America, with all of his might, 
got tired and left. There are Taliban's in your government. They are waiting. And the only thing that will stop them are superior ideas. The only idea that I have to share with you is the one that says love your neighbor as yourselves, but insist. Are you hearing me again? Insist that you are not less than any other man. Because the entire idea of Western civilization was created on one basic biblical precept, the equality of all men. The creation and erection of feudal states is also found on one principle, the inequality, acceptable non-equality of all men. So, that second nation that needs to be battered because this one is going to die, is the one that understands that all men are equal. Thank you very much. The man said it the way it is. Because even on my backyard, feudalism is now the order of the day. And you know who are the pilotas of it? Your political class. Listen to this. Hmm. This is the greatest speech I've ever had in recent time. Because he opened my consciousness to the understanding that truly we are already fulanized. People thought that fulanization will only come when everybody or Islamization will only come when everybody is now uh, subjected to Islamic doctrine. No, far from it. Or fulanization is the only time when the fulani has dominated everywhere, are in control of your market space, your, your school space, your farmland and the rest of them. No! It has held grip. It's an ideology that had been gazetted by the political class. What we are seeing in Nigeria today is feudalism in the name of democracy. And it is being practiced across Nigeria. Without exception, the same system, the same pattern. Take a look at your local government to start with. Take it up to your state government to start with. And Nigeria as a whole, you will understand that everything Pharaoh Tumi said here is absolutely the truth. And that is why they are all together to resist this ballot revolution by the obedient movement. But I can tell you, Nigerians, if you give up on this fight, it is over. Expect the worst. Expect the worst. Okay, what can you make of the refinery by, by Dangote? One man was able to set up a factory, a refinery, which the federal government could not as a government. You know why? Because they have rebuilt their interest in that very establishment by Dangote. They, all of them have built in their interest there. It took one man to do what government should have done over the years. He's basically embarrassed multiple governments in Nigeria because what he's doing is what government should have done. It took one man to build this refinery and they can't fix Port Harcourt, they can't fix Wari, they can't fix Kaduna. Isn't that an embarrassment? And he's done it. So he's a, he's a hero. And the, the government should apologize to Nigerians for being so inept and not being able to do what one man has done. And that's why I think he's a great guy. Price is going to go up. You will pay market value PMS. The minute he starts, you will pay market value. So don't think his refinery is going to make prices drop. You're going to pay market value. For how much are you paying now to fill up your tank? About 8,000, 10,000. Then you will be paying 30,000. Market value. He's not going to do this and subsidize you. He's not going to subsidize you. The government can subsidize you. He will not subsidize you. If he doesn't charge market value, he's going to be broke. All of them are built in their economic interest there. That is why they must kill the government institutions and energize a private sector of their own. Monopolize it and we all will be working for them. What else do you think is feudalism? He has a splendid better. Does it come to you as a surprise that Tinibu announced first subsidy? It is not even Tinibu that announced it. But I'm going to get to that on the next video. It is Buhari and his cohorts. Because they knew that by next month, which is when the budget of 2023 had it that they can only... That would be the end of the government subsidizing petroleum product. And that is the time... Dangote announced of his product hitting the market. 
Do you think it is a coincidence? No, it is not. It is a gazetted plan. That is feudalism. Nigerians, every one of us, down to whatever we do, will be working and making account to them. In the name of, there is no power, <clears throat> so we all depend on fuel. Buy Jen to do your hair. Buy Jen to cook your food. Buy Jen to run your business. I mean fuel. In the name of, to refuel your Jen. Sorry. Buy everything you must run on power generator and depend on the fuel they are producing. You get that? We are all... And, and it is not even in a competitive um, uh, um, economy. Nigeria is not competitive at all. And the person that is supposed to cushion the effect, which is the government, is aligned with them. That is feudalism. It is not a surprise. And it is happening across board. From the east to the west. From north to south. Every Nigerian is feeling the heat. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or Muslim. It doesn't matter your indigenous identity. Whether you are a Fulani man or are a woman or do the woman or even Biafra. Every one of us is <laughs> we are all under that feudal system. The feudalization we have all dreaded <laughs> is already here with us. And your government, your state governors, your politicians, every one of them, many of them, majority of them have built in their interest. There are only very few exceptional ones and we will continue beaming our light to identify those ones that could help the Nigerian people in this fight for their liberation. Because I speak for all Nigerians, irrespective of your indigenous identity or wherever you come from. Because Nigerians, every one of us, we are victim of this. I'm only a voice. I'm an advocate for good governance. The only thing you can help me do is to share this video to the next person to open their eyes to see that ultimately we are all victims. I'm asking you to know the Peters. Help me share this video. Drop your comment. I want to have your opinion on this. Bye-bye for now.